Well, welcome back. Our topic today, we're going to hit those forces and vectors one more time just to make sure we've really got this down. So if you had a little trouble yesterday, that's okay. Um, like I said, we're going to redo it and talk about a few more properties today. So just to recall, you should only have two forces. So let's get this picture drawn in our notebook. We're always going to stem from this point here. We've got one force going to the right and one force going up like this. And those again, those are our only two forces. Now what comes out between them should be your resultant force. All right, and we said, just to make this easier on us, we're going to turn the shape into a parallelogram. So I'm just going to take this like so, extend my resultant there, and you've got a parallelogram with two congruent triangles. Now, some things that seem to happen pretty often. Many times they give you this whole angle here. But notice that whole angle isn't part of either of those triangles. So really, this whole angle is given so you can get the angle up here. And recall that they add up to 180, so I would just take 180 minus that angle, and I could get this upper angle. Some other nice properties is that our opposite sides are congruent. And then we talked about that alternate interior rule if we make our z. Those angles inside are also congruent. So hopefully you can see my z. Let me change colors here. And if I create my z... This upper angle is congruent to this lower angle in the triangles. All right, and that's just another fun fact that we use pretty often. So let's go ahead and try a new problem. All right, before we dive right in, we do have to discuss the difference between our parallelogram and rhombus. You're going to see both of those today. So let's get a quick sketch, and we'll make a little table in our book there. We've talked about parallelogram yesterday, and we'll just put a few fun facts down, but compared to the rhombus, can you think about what the difference is between them? Think back to your geometry days. A rhombus is a little more special because, well, it looks the same, except all of the sides are equal. So let's make that tick mark right away on there. All four sides are equal. It's very similar to a square that's tilted on its side. Some people like to say a square that got hit by a bus, hence the word rhombus. Um, but again, we're going to list some fun facts here. All right, so our first fact, the difference between the two, opposite sides are equal in that parallelogram. So those two sides are congruent, and those two sides are congruent. And in the rhombus, all sides are equal. Fun fact two here, adjacent angles add up to 180. And notice I put that in both. And what I'm implying is that if I put a 1 and a 2 there, and a 1 and a 2 there, I'm really saying angle 1 plus angle 2 total 180 degrees. And same thing here, angle 1 plus angle 2 total 180 degrees. Next fact, in the parallelogram, the angle does not, the diagonal does not bisect the angle. And we talked about that yesterday. When I draw this diagonal in, um, if I put an X and a Y here, that diagonal does not cut that in half. X and Y are not equal to each other. However, and that's what's special about this diagonal of the rhombus, when I draw it in the rhombus, I just want to stress that it does bisect the angle. Okay, so x and x, and that's because you have equal sides. So that's a huge deal. The diagonal does bisect the angle in a rhombus. And lastly, our next big fact about a rhombus is that the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. There's two keywords in there, circle perpendicular and bisector. So let me draw in my other diagonal. Okay, so let's take care of the word bisector first. What I'm implying is that this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side. The diagonals bisect each other. They cut each other in half. Now, I'm also saying that they're perpendicular to each other, so that means they are creating four 90-degree angles, All right, which allows us to do some right triangle trig there. We have four 90-degree angles, and that's key. So let's go ahead and try a problem. All right, question one. Two equal forces of 85 act on a body whose angle measures 50 degrees. Find the magnitude of the resultant force to the nearest tenth. All right, so let's go ahead and get a sketch set up, very similar to yesterday. The only thing I want to catch is that I have two equal forces, so try to make them the same length. I'm going to get my starting point. And those look pretty close to being the same length, and I'm going to go ahead and label those with 85. So what I'm trying to tell you without coming out and saying it is if your two forces are equal and you know opposite sides are equal, you've got yourself a rhombus. Okay, so that's also telling me this side is 85 and this side is 85. So we've got ourselves a rhombus. 
So all those properties we just talked about hold true here. Uh, let's see. It says they act on an angle, so where those two forces meet, and remember these are your only two forces, the rest is just a pretty picture, that angle is 50 degrees. Um, find the magnitude of the resultant, so they want to know what this resultant force is. That is our question, so I'm going to go ahead and place an X there. Now, like we said, this one is a little special. Because we know it's a rhombus, this diagonal that I have actually does bisect the angle, and it's very rare that we have that. So I can, in fact, say this angle is 25 and this angle is 25. And again, that's only true because you have a rhombus. Let's see, if I knew this whole angle was 50, I also know this whole angle then is, hopefully you've guessed it, oops, 130. Because remember, those two angles have to add up to 180. All right, now, according to my property um, of alternate interior angles, which hopefully you see the Z there, so if this angle is 25, that also implies that angle up there is 25. And I've got every side and every angle except that resultant. So I can go ahead and set up my problem to find this. So again, I always look for sines first, law of sines. And those are your two opposites. So x is clearly across from the 130 angle. I'm going to say that's the sine of 130 over x equals. And now you have so many to choose from here. I'm going to pick this side, sine of 85, and that's across from 25. So the sine of 25 over 85. And just make, you know, make sure you say little things. The angle is always with the trig function there, and the side should be opposite. All right. Well, you've got it by now. This should be pretty straightforward, a nice cross multiply. Remember, this number always goes in front. So 85 sine of 130 equals x sine of 25. And my goal is to get x by itself, so I'm just going to divide both sides by the sine of... 25. And a nice little plug and chug in your calculator. Make sure you're in that degree mode and you should have it. And I get a nice answer of x equals 154 and it's edge to the nearest tenth which makes that point 1. And there you go. Let's try another. Number two. Two forces of 80 pounds and 100 pounds yield a resultant force of 60 pounds. So let's just stop right there and get our picture drawn. Notice the pounds are different lengths, 80 and 100, so we're back to a parallelogram. Okay, so I'm going to label that. Uh, I'm going to go with 100 here and 80 here. Technically doesn't matter. I'm just drawing my picture as best I can. And it says they have a resultant force of 60 pounds. Okay, so again, I just want to be clear. You have whoops, force 1, force 2, and the resultant that shoots through the center there. Those are your only two forces. The rest of it, we're just going to draw that pretty picture to make it look like a parallelogram. I'll extend that. All right, as I keep reading, find to the nearest 10 minutes or nearest tenth of a degree the angle between the two forces. So since those are my only two forces, the angle between them is this whole angle. Now remember, that whole angle is not in either triangle. Bits and pieces are in two triangles. So you can't actually get that. All right, so I just want to say it's not possible to get that right away. So what you're going to have to do is you actually have to go and get this angle. I'm going to put an X up there. And that's great because if you get that angle, you know that 180 minus X will get you the angle that you want there. Okay, because remember, these two angles that we talked about have to add up to 180. So you can't actually get this angle right away. You have to find this angle and then you can subtract to get the other angle. So I'm just going to label this side 100 as well. If you find your picture messy or overwhelming, it's very simple to just pull out that triangle. Okay, so basically, I want you to think of it as me pulling out this top triangle here. I know this angle's x, I know this side is 100, this side is 80, this side is 60. Remember, you don't know this angle here, so you can't put anything in there. So, a quick check whether you have law of sines or law of cosines. And I always look for sines first, those are your two opposites. Notice you've got 60 across from x, so you're kind of feeling good about law of sines. But, 100 is across from nothing, and 80 is across from nothing. So you can't use law of sines. So we're going to have to go with cosines. And as you'll recall from the past three days here, law of cosines says what you're finding comes 
first, and that's the whole key. What you're finding comes first. So if you want this angle, you have to start with that side. So if you feel better about putting letters on it, go for it, A, B, C. If you really want some letters, that means I would be starting with side B. Um, I'm going to do it without letters, but again, do what you like. Finding comes first, so that's my 60 squared equals, now I just grab my other two sides, 80 squared plus 100 squared minus 2 times the same two numbers, 80 and 100. And remember, it's law of cosines, make sure you use cosine of x. Now I can't stress enough that this group is stuck together, it's being multiplied together. So we're just going to do these individually. So that gives me 3,600, I've got 6,400, plus 10,000, minus, so this group is stuck together, that's 16,000, cosine x. So again, stressing, this is attached to this term. Um, I can add these two pieces and subtract them over, so I can add that in my head there and get, oops, oops. Uh, 16,400, and so I'm going to take my 3,600 and subtract that 16,400. That leaves me with negative 12,800 equals negative 16,000 cosine x. So divide both sides by that negative 16,000. Again, hopefully this is old news to you. And I've got 0.8 equals cosine x. Now, if for some silly reason they wanted cosine x, I'd be done. But of course, they usually don't. They want me to go get x. So remember, you are taking the inverse of both sides. And so if I hit second cosine of that 0.8, I should be getting 36.869 blah, 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 blah equals x. Now, you can't just round that to 37 it doesn't work that way. You only round final answers. So let's get that in our notes. Only round final answers. Okay, so you've got to store here. So I'm going to store that into alpha A. Now, let me just look at my picture again just to make sure we're all on the same page here. That angle was up here. That's my 36.86 angle. And I'll go back to this picture, I guess. That's this angle. If I want this whole angle, we said we have to take 180 and subtract the angle we found. So hopefully, you're saying 180 minus alpha A, and you're getting 143.1301 degrees. Now it did say we could round our final answer only to the nearest tenth. So if I want to do that, it's 143.1 degrees. Or it said you could round to the nearest 10 minutes. So I just want to recall your minute buttons. Um, to get this into minutes, you're hitting that second angle. And you're asking for DMS, degrees, minutes, seconds. And it's 140 degrees. It said 7 minutes, and it said round to the nearest 10 minutes. So that would round up to 10 minutes. And there you go. All right, well, this is our last problem for the night. We're just going to try one more force problem together. Two forces of 30 and 40 pounds act on a body. So they're not equal, so we're going to make it look like a parallelogram. Forming an acute angle with each other. And again, the, I'm just saying that this angle here is less than 90, which it looks like it is. The angle between the resultant and the 30-pound 30 30 pound force is 35 degrees in 10 minutes. Oh boy, do we hate these minutes. Let me read that again. The angle between the resultant... So I'm going to get my highlighter, here's my resultant, and the 30 pound force. Okay, so use that highlighter to identify it. That angle that they're talking about, that is the angle that's 35 degrees in 10 minutes. Alright, so I've labeled everything I can, I'm going to finish off my parallelogram. Um, I know this side is also 40, and of course that side's 30. It says, find to the nearest 10 minutes the angle between the two given forces. So what am I asking for? I need the angle between the 30 and the 40 pound force. Hopefully you're saying that's this whole angle. Now remember, you can't just take this and double it unless it's a rhombus. That means these two sides are equal, which it's clearly not, so you can't just double it. So we've got to do some math and figure it out. 
Now in theory, I really only need to figure out this angle because once I know those two, I can just add them together to create my whole angle. Now, take that interior angle method, you see the Z there, and I'll just go over it in a different color. So here's my Z. So this angle X is congruent to this angle in my triangle, so I'm going to label it there. And again, if you feel overwhelmed, you can just kind of redraw that one piece. So I'm going to redraw this triangle here off to the side. Okay, I know this side is 40, I know this side is 30, I know this is 35 degrees in 10 minutes, and I'm looking for this angle. Alright, so take a look. What do you have? Look for law of signs first. I have the side and the angle opposite, side and angle opposite. Awesome, that's the easy one. Or easier, I guess. Alright, so I'm going to say 30 is across from the sine of x. Remember, the angle goes with the trig function. 40 is across from the sine of 35 degrees in 10 minutes. Okay, make sure the angle's with the trig function. A nice cross multiply. Always put that nice single number in front. 30 sine of 35 degrees in 10 minutes equals 40. Put that nice number in front. Sine of x. Now remember, that sign is with the x, so I'm only going to divide out the 40. So over here I'm left with sine of x. On this side I'm going straight to my calculator. Remember to get those degrees and minutes, you're hitting second angle. I get a real ugly number, 0.431967, blah, blah, blah. Okay, remember you're storing that. Hopefully you're amazing at storing now. I'm going to store that into alpha a equals sine of x. And to get rid of that sine function, you have to take the inverse sine of alpha a. And I've got 25.592, etc. equals x. Now, let's just recall, what did we just find? Let's go back and look at that picture. We found this angle here, which if I go back and look at my whole picture, that angle here that we just found is congruent to this angle here because they are alternate interior. And that question wanted the whole angle. So I'm just going to take what I have and add on to it. So again, I'm taking that 25.592 number that I had, that I stored, and I'm going to add on to that my 35 degrees in 10 minutes. And I get six, oops, 60.759. And they want that to the nearest 10 minutes, so again, you're hitting second angle DMS for degrees, minutes, seconds. And that leaves me with, it's getting a little sloppy, I'm going to write on my right here, 60 degrees, 45 minutes. And they said round this to the nearest 10 minutes. Well, that means 45 is going to round up the next 10 minute mark would be 50 minutes. And there you have it. We've got our final answer. We've got that whole angle. Well, like I said, that's all for tonight. Hopefully just a little review and maybe a new uh, reminder about some rhombus properties. Have a great night.